Hello friends. So I've had a few questions about my Hypnotoad animation since last week, specifically how I put the effects together. So I thought I'd quickly run through them today, and I think some of you will find this useful. But for the more experienced viewers, you might have put them together differently, so please share how in the comments below. Let's all learn from each other. But if you're newer to open tunes and the effects baffle you, don't worry, I go through them quite slowly. And don't forget, I only added these effects one effect at a time, so there's no need to feel overwhelmed. So first, let's take a look at the columns in the X sheet. So first we've got the main Hypnotoad drawing that you saw me drawing in my thank you video, which started from a sketch, through to inking, and then colouring. But then when I finished, I realised that the eyes were still a bit too small, so I added some eye circles, just to make them larger. And as it happened, this became really useful when it came to the effects. But I'll show you that in a second. And then on top of each circle, I added an eye. And these are just a sub X sheet that I'll talk about in a second. But they're both identical, but the frames used are offset slightly, just so they don't animate at the same time. And the frog's right eye was in front of his face, so I also added this eye mask, which was just a small part of the face, cut out and placed on its own column to block out some of the eye. And then finally, I added the shadows. And I painted these on, going over the edge of the line, knowing that I'd use a matte in effect to make sure they stayed within the body of Hypnotoad. But you'll see that when we look at the effects in a second. Also for the shadows column, I used the opacity slider on the column to make the shadows slightly paler. Because originally they were painted in black. And to make this opacity go into the rendered animation, you just need to change an option in the scene settings. And that's to tick this box at the bottom here. Okay, so firstly, how did I draw the eye moving? Well, if I overlay the video of where I did the drawing, you'll see how I did it. And I had an idea to use the animate tool to programmatically to use four circles animated to show the outline of where I want the eye moving up and down and left and right. And I was really pleased with how it came out. So I added four circles and I moved the left and right ones left and right and the top and bottom up and down. And then once I had the timing working, I collapsed each circle into its own sub egg sheet, just so I could hide the animation keys and so I can offset each one, so it doesn't look quite as rhythmic. And then once I had this move in as I wanted, I collapsed all four into a sub egg sheet again. Then on a new level, I used these as a guide to draw around them which gave the look of the eye more of a manual hand-drawn look rather than an automated look of four circles moving. And I think this came out okay. And then I collapsed that into a sub-egg sheet and this allowed me to offset the movement so each eye didn't move the same. And that's where we come to the current sub-egg sheet. So you can see here, the right eye, the frames move from frame 1 to 18 and the left eye move from frames 4 through to 18 and then 1 to 3 at the end. So frame 1 here on the left eye is exactly the same as frame 1 on the right eye. Just offset so they move at a different time. Which adds to that pulsating look. And then the animation key here on frame 1 is just the position of the eye to go in front of the yellow circle. So if we take a look inside the sub-egg sheet, we can see the effects. So in here, you just see the one column of the drawing of the eye. I've already deleted the sub-egg sheet with the guide in it. So if we go to the schematic view that I've got here, and here's the FX schematic. So if we turn on the preview mode, you can see exactly how the effect looks. So I've got the black drawing of the eye here that I showed you. And on top of that, I've got a red effect around the outside of the eye and then a larger yellow glow effect. 
So to do this, I've used three different effect nodes. The first one I added was this red effect. And if I click that, you'll see over on the right in my docked effect settings, that it's simply a glow effect set up with the red color. And a combination of the brightness and the blur defines how much red you see and how bright it is. And that takes as the input, just the black drawing for the eye. And that line here goes through to the output. And also the red output is used as an input into the yellow glow. And this is because the yellow glow is drawn outside of the red glow. And again, it's the combination of the blur and the brightness that accounts for the size and the actual color and brightness of that glow. And then finally, I use an over FX node. And you can find that in the layer blending group, just here. And all that does is that defines the order of the effects in the way they're drawn. So working from back to front, it's listed from the bottom to the top. So first, we've got the yellow at the bottom. On top of that, we draw the red. And on top of that, we have the black eye. And then that's just piped into the X sheet. And finally, there's the flicker in the yellow glow. And you can see how I did this in the function editor. So if I show the brightness of both the red and the yellow, you can see how I adjusted the brightness to give that flickering effect by changing the values of the keys direct in the function editor. And because the same sub X sheet is used both for the left eye and the right eye, I haven't got to re-add the effect anywhere else. So if we take a look at the rest of the effects, if I start simply, the easiest effect to look at would be this matte in effect for the shadows. So if you remember, without the effects turned on, the shadow color was drawn outside of the lines of Hypnotoad. And when the effects turned on, they're kept within his body. And that's because of the use of the matte in effect. And all you need to do for that is use the shadows as the source for the drawing and then use Hypnotoad's body as the matte location. And again, the output goes to the X sheet. And of course, to see Hypnotoad himself, he also has an output going direct to the X sheet. Then we've also got the eye mask go into the X sheet, because we need to see that, of course. That also goes into this over effect node, which again, just defines the order of some stacked effects, moving from the bottom to the top. So starting at the back of the drawing is the bottom one, source five here. And that is the eye circles. So if I delete all the other inputs, I draw in a box over them and then press and delete, you can see the only input going in there is this circle shape. So the next one on top of that is the left eye being matted in to the circle. Now, why is that needed? Well, without it, the effect would go outside of the circle area. So if I just turn that effect off, and then zoom in close, you'll see the light from the eye, the yellow glow, actually comes outside of the circle and it's shown on Hypnotoad's body. You can't see the left eye very clearly, but if you take a look at the right eye, you can see that even more how it comes outside the circle. So this is just a way to keep it tidy and keep it contained inside the eye. And finally, on top of that, we've got the eye mask. And that's the column with just a piece of the Hypnotoad's face, and that's there just to make sure it covers the front of the eye. And finally, at the very top, we use this palette filter node with the eye circle as the input. And what that does is it draws the black outline of the circle in front of all the other effects. We do that in this node by choosing to keep the line with the color index of one, which is the black color, and then delete all the areas. And the best way to see that is if I delete all the other inputs apart from this one palette filter input, And you'll see, here's the black line from this one effect node. 
So that's all the effects I used for the Hypnotoad. But don't forget, I only added these one node at a time, so don't be put off using them by the number of nodes that I've used. Just add the one node for the one effect you want, and then build up from there. So there you go. That's what I did to put this little animation together. If you've got any questions about this, just drop me a comment below. And I'll see you on Friday for the next Future Armor video. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.